these days. Have you noticed? I'm not talking about the living, breathing variety of the three-toed rainforest-dwelling critter, known for its proclivity to hang upside down in trees and do, well, almost nothing else. I'm talking about sloths in popular culture, the ones plastered on greeting cards, the plush ones on toy store shelves, the animated ones in Disney feature films. Sloths have captured the popular imagination. What's the deal with that? Sloths are perhaps best known for being the slowest moving mammal on the planet. Why has this slow moving, do nothing creature captured our imaginations? What is our current affection for sloths all about? I'll admit, I feel a certain kinship with the sloth. I will also admit that I have participated in the sloth craze. I couldn't resist that box of Christmas note cards featuring a sloth in its usual tree hanging pose, delightfully clad in a Santa cap. A mini book of sloth wisdom has taken up residence on a valuable patch of my desktop real estate. I count the sloth as one of my spirit animals. I'm not so much a busy bee or a workhorse by nature. Neither am I a playful puppy or a mischievous monkey. I relate more to the slow moving, do nothing sloth. In our work obsessed culture that values productivity to the point of worship, I worry about my sloth like tendencies. American culture is one that puts a price on time and measures every minute by tasks accomplished and deliverables produced. Sloth-like though I may be, I feel the thrill of pride when I tick through my to-do list with unusual efficiency. That efficiency is rare for me. More often, I forget to even look at my to-do list and end up chastising myself and committing to divest of my inner sloth. Because of this, I am especially gratified by the public's growing fondness for the sloth. It appears I am far from alone in my affinity for sloth-like ways. Perhaps the rise of the sloth signals a growing hunger among us for a break from so much busyness, from the endless cycle of producing and consuming that is depleting our planet's precious resources and our spirits at the same time. More and more of us, it would seem, are longing to imitate the sloth. We are longing to just hang out and do nothing. What is behind that longing, I wonder? What is it that we gain from doing nothing? According to recent research on the brain, one of the things we gain when we do nothing is creativity. According to science writer Michael Harris, when we are free from attention demanding tasks, the mind shifts into default mode and pans through connections that at first seem wholly random. It explores problems with a curiosity and openness we might never choose to entertain. Wandering, according to Michael Harris, is our mind's default mode. When we hang out sloth-like, our minds are free to wander, to daydream, to make sense out of the world and our experiences with curiosity and creativity. Psychologist and author Michael Corbalis asserts that the wandering mind is the source of creativity, the spark of innovation that leads to well-being. Poets and artists have long valued the creative ways of mind wandering. Upon stepping down from her tenure as U.S. Poet Laureate, Kay Ryan told an interviewer that she planned to do more wool gathering, that is idle rumination, daydreaming, which is absolutely essential for poetry, she said. Even as I advocate for mind wandering, I want to acknowledge that very few among us make a living wage by way of poetry. Time for mind wandering and daydreaming is a costly privilege, 
that cost is unequally distributed by white supremacy culture. Embracing the way of the sloth comes with far greater risk and far less reward for folks marginalized by race, class, and gender identities. One of the hypocrisies of white supremacy culture is that it prizes work and productivity while demanding nearly ceaseless labor from the most marginalized and reserving the greatest share of rest and recreation for the most privileged. In order to dismantle white supremacy culture and rebuild our communities and culture in the image of love and justice, I believe we need to democratize the way of the sloth. I believe we need to open access to the creative potential of the wandering, daydreaming mind. In the world made anew, may each and every one of us have the freedom to do nothing but daydream, to let our minds wander in all their infinite beauty and chaos, creativity, and possibility.